Okay, I, know, I know it's pretty early now, so really appreciate that you get up early and come to this talk. Uh, so my name is Peter, and I'm going to talk about uh, our work that we did at the Shanghai Blockchain Research Institute. And what we did was we investigated how hard it would be to execute transactions in parallel on the EVM. As you might know, the EVM is designed in a sequential manner. Usually you execute all transactions in a block one by one. So the question is, can we parallelize that? What we found, um, what I want to talk about today is two challenges that we identified. And the first of those is transaction dependencies. You're probably all familiar with uh, how Ethereum works. Basically, we have a global shared state, which is the state tree. Theoretically, a transaction could access any point, any entry in this state tree. Uh, that is, whether it can access a, a slot or not, that's uh, defined by the contract code. So for instance, if we have two transactions from two different accounts, and both of them call the same contract, and that contract reads or writes the same entry, then these transactions will have a conflict or a dependency. On Ethereum, this is not a problem now because we execute transactions sequentially, but if you parallelize them, then this will become a problem because you cannot uh, concurrently execute such transactions. So we did some uh, evaluations. Basically what we did is we collected some storage traces for a few hundred thousands of blocks from you know, historical data on Ethereum. And we did some simulations with some uh, OCC scheduler. And what we found is that the theoretical maximum speed up is as little as four times. So even if you have eight threads or 16 threads, at least on the VM level, if you don't consider storage, you cannot do much, much better than, than four times. And that's kind of an underwhelming result. So some examples, some simple examples of these dependencies. For instance, if you have two transactions to the same ERC20 token, uh, if they send from the same sender or to the same receiver, then they will conflict on the balances mapping. Or if you have two transactions swapping tokens on Uniswap, uh, swapping the same token pair, then both of them will modify the reserve variables. So that's also another kind of conflict. Or if two transactions are minting an NFT, then for instance, they can conflict on total supply if the contract is keeping track of that. We identified this, and this is an issue. I think this severely limits the parallelizability of EVM transactions as they are today. And we have some suggestions how we could improve this. This is kind of early, just some ideas to, to throw in there. The first idea is to use a sharded counter. So from the examples before, you saw that uh, many of these conflicts are on conflicts on a single storage slot, which is like a, an integer or some counter. And yeah, two transactions read and write the same slot. So the idea would be to shard it into multiple slots. So one int is represented by three, five, seven slots. And then we could route transactions based on some heuristic to different slots. Let's say we take the last byte of the hash of the sender address. So two transactions from different senders would probably, uh, with a higher probability, they would modify different slots uh, in the contract. And the second idea that we came up with is uh, lazy add opcodes. So for, in this example, we have a very simple function that's just incrementing a counter. Uh, but when you compile it to EVM bytecode, what you have is a storage load operation. Then you do something with that value and you store it back. So two concurrent transactions uh, will have a conflict on these like, concurrent storage load, storage store operations. And uh, you know, we cannot parallelize them. The idea, idea here is to maybe introduce a new kind of semantics for addition, lazy add or commutative add. And that would be evaluated la uh, lazily. So uh, these transactions can execute in parallel. And then we basically batch those two updates together into a single update at the end. And that could be executed at the end of the block, for instance. And the second challenge that we identified is that of determinism. So as you might know, uh, in parallel execution, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of non-determinism. And we can make sure that two transactions have the same result, or two executions but there are other types of non-determinism. For instance, here we have two executions of three, three different transactions. And let's say transaction two depends on transaction one. So in this case, on node A, one and two are executed concurrently, so two has to abort and be re-executed because there's an update that it could not see. And on node B, they execute it sequentially, so node, uh, transaction two can commit directly. 
our idea is that if we have parallel execution, at some point we have to introduce some incentives because if you can trigger some aborts, that kind of opens up uh, the door for some denial of service attacks. And if we do associate some incentives with aborts, then to these two executions in the example, they will yield a different uh, final state. So that is gonna be an issue. Two nodes will diverge. So for this, we kind of came up with a new scheduling framework called optimistic concurrency control with deterministic aborts. And the idea is very simple. Instead of de deciding these abort commit decisions during runtime, you make this decision prior to running the transactions in a de deterministic way. So the, uh, these decisions will be deterministically you know, the same on all nodes. And this way, uh, even if you attach incentives to these decisions, uh, the final state that different nodes will arrive on will be the same. So this is the OCCDA framework. Just to summarize kind of the takeaway from this talk, um, so it's pretty hard to get parallelization done on the EVM because it was not designed with this in mind, but I think it's gonna be worth it. For instance, if you manage to scale Ethereum on layer one or layer two with a higher transac transaction load, parallel execution will have a very big impact on the overall uh, yeah, efficiency of the system. So if you're interested in this uh, you know, research direction, I would encourage you to you know, read up on it, think about it. And we actually have a publication about this topic. So if you're interested in a much detailed discussion about the ideas that I talked about here, you can go ahead and scan the QR code and read the preprint. That kind of concludes my talk today. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, we have time for one quick question. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what your thoughts are on parallelizing just balance transfers, uh, which are much simpler, instead of contract what? stuff, just like Ethereum balance transfers, like certain transaction types are radically simpler than contract execution, and I wonder if you had any thoughts on that. Yeah, that's a good question. So here we only considered con contract storage conflicts, but actually there are different kind of conflicts. You know, another part of the state trees the account with the nonce and the balance. So yeah, simple transfers are expected to be much easier to parallelize. And even with contracts with access lists, you get much more information uh, that you can use to parallelize. Uh, but I'm not sure. The majority of transactions, I think, are contract calls. So I'm not sure about the impact of this. But I think that's certainly something to, to look into. Thanks again. OK, thank you very much, Peter. An applause for Peter, please.